How often, as a geologist, do I get to swim in my rocks? Well, today I'm here at Dancing Ledge and this is a tide pool that got blasted into the quarry. So I am literally able to swim in my beloved rocks. So join me today for a whistle stop tour of the geology and history of this area and a nice little dip. Right, so Dancing Ledge is down this way and I'm just about to begin my descent down. Thankfully, I've chosen to not come here at the heat of the day. So really feel sorry for those trying to come up. It was an exceedingly warm day this day and definitely no ice cream huts to be seen. But off I went. All these steps on the way down, you can see are like slatted pieces of quarry stone. So there's a good chance all of this stuff's come out the local quarry and they've just stacked it all up to make our lives a little bit easier walking because whilst it is beautifully sunny and dry today, I can confirm this is an absolute mud bath in the winter. I don't look forward to climbing back up that hill. If it looks steep on the camera, I promise it's steeper than you think. Okay, bonus footage, just to show you the angle of this hill. And it goes up a long way. Just, just saying. Anyway, blissfully optimistic about the pain yet to come later, I got to the quarry itself, and might I say, it is gorgeous here. We are going to head down the steps. Uh, I've got you on hands-free mode. So why is it called Dancing Ledge? Because there sure as hell isn't a dance floor here. Well. There have been some different conversations that I've heard people have that maybe it's because the lower ledge, the waves danced across it. But one of the most convincing theories I've heard is actually related to this black stuff in the cliff behind me. I like this theory and it was called Dark Springs. Dancing, Dark Springs, Dark Spring Ledge. You can see the black comes out along fracture planes and that's because it's where the water is literally springing out to the rock. So this is groundwater meeting the quarry surface. So I quite like the theory that it's Dark Spring Ledge rather than Dancing Ledge, but I don't know if anyone knows the real answer on that one. I'd like to think it's due to the geology, not due to a dance floor. I'm going to start off over here, mainly because by the water at the moment it is really busy because it is a beautifully warm day and everyone's having a nice bit of a bathe, which, do you know what? Can't blame them one bit, but I'm here to talk about the rocks. So, Behind me here, we've got an old exposed quarry face. You will see there's like a bricked up area down here. Just adding in this little bit of footage so you can see it's a very imposing cliff and under here it's where I was talking about. That's actually an old mining adit. So the quarrymen would have used to follow out the rock that they were looking for, which in this case was called the Portland Stone. And they would have chased this out underground, trying to get as much of this rock as they possibly could. Now, over many years, this has become a bit unstable, so they now have blocked it up and the little grates that you see in there aren't anything too suspicious. They're just to let bats in and out because now there's quite a good population. I particularly like this little cliff because you can see a really nice cross section through the bedding. And if I bring you to the bit that I'm stood close to here, you can see all this beautiful fracture the rocks. But let's have a closer look at what it's made of. This little piece of stone here has come out of the quarry at some point. I'm not quite sure which layer, but we're going to have a bit of a closer look. Because can you see on this yellowy surface? Now this is calcite that has remineralized on the surface. Um, this will have been because there will have been one of these fracture planes, which you can kind of see all these cracks going through the rocks. Water is able to travel through these and because it's dissolved other sort of limestone, it's able to re-precipitate this as minerals like this calcite. But getting even more exciting, can you see these brown bits here? So these bits are fossils. So I can see this little brown one here, that is some sort of shelly fossil. And this one here is also a shell fossil, but it's been preserved with some crystals in it. That sparkly little fossil, that is what we like to see. So you can see all sorts of little tiny fragments of stuff going on. There's loads and loads of tiny little shelly fragments. That's because this area, when this rock was forming, would have been a nice warm shallow sea. 
because that's how limestone forms. It can only form in very specific environments. All of the rocks in this area formed in the Jurassic period. And does that mean there were dinosaurs running around? Unfortunately, not so much here, because all of this rock was formed in warm, shallow seas. But just up on top of the hill, about oh, a mile or so yonder that way, there are actually dinosaur footprints. So we can tell we went from these warm, shallow seas to something that was slowly shallowing. A lot of the Jurassic Coast shows this sort of periodic shallowing, deepening, shallowing, deepening, but I'm not going to go into that today too much because that's a whole story of its own. Now, one of the things Dancing Ledge is most known for, especially by the locals, is the fact it's got a tidal pool. So we have this plane of the quarry that I'm on here. But when you start looking down, you'll see there's multiple ledges. So if I take a wander down here, you will see there is a really incredible tidal swimming pool. I can't come all the way here on a hot day without giving that a go, because truly, am I really a geologist if I haven't given it a go going for a swim in this place? Like, what geologist doesn't want to swim in a quarry deep down? The pathway to get down is a little bit sketch. This is why we've got hands free. Eek. Okay, we're down ledge one. And now we've got to get down this next bit here. I would definitely say this is not one to be done in flip-flops, but to be fair, if you've gotten here, you're probably not in flip-flops anyway. So the options to get down are like this, with about a five foot drop, or if you're feeling slightly less brave, here's off of this bit, which still required full blown rock climbing. So yeah, it's not for the faint of heart and definitely not one that I would recommend if you're not confident on your feet and at using arms as well. But I did make it down in one piece, I am alive, and now it's time to investigate the quarrying history a little bit further. So this whole surface that I'm on here has also been used a lot for coast steering recently, and you can hear some kids playing in the caves back here. This was a level they weren't so interested in, so it's got this like stepped approach for the whole of Dancing Ledge. So these little bits here, these are chert which is probably why this level was left, because chert's not very good in quarry stone. They want something that they can cut in any direction with no weaknesses. So the chert is going to create a natural weakness plane, so they didn't really want to use that sort of bit. So you've quarried the stone. How do you get rid of it? Well, you might have seen the hill on the way here was incredibly steep. So there was not a lot of point trying to lug it all the way up the hill. So instead what they did was use the sea. So it was really common back in the times that they were doing a lot of quarrying around here to bring barges up, load them up, with lots of stone and then send them off. Now, there's a really fun bit of history that I enjoy. The, sh the boats had to be at a certain height in the water. So they go away from here. That's fine. It's all nice and heavy, loaded up with than the stone. But how did you get it heavy after it deposited all this in London? Well, they actually used to send all the waste rubble back here. They repurposed entire bits of London and used it in the local town. So there's even an entire bell tower in Swanage that they've repurposed from London and brought it back in like trade for some of the Portland stone from these sort of quarries. It's just one of those really fun little human history bits. Equally, you can see things like this these metal pieces. These metal pieces would have been part of the quarrying activities. And in fact, where I've stashed my bag here, you can see a whole bunch of the old places where they'd put posts and cranes all the way along. But this isn't the only thing that the quarry surface can reveal, because the fossils here are different to what we saw in the higher level. So this is also in the same surface as everything else. And these would have been where little creatures were burrowing through sediment on a sea floor. So would have been some kind of little crustacean or something. There's another one there I can see. But it's really hard to tell exactly what animal would have burrowed and caused these ones. So 
I believe these ones are called thalassanoides, but I will put on the screen if I am wrong. Most, but not all, thalassanoides burrows are made by ancient decapod crustaceans. But, as I said, it's exceedingly difficult to tell exactly which type, as all we've got left to look at is their burrow that just got filled in with sediment before it got crushed, so we can't really see the creature itself. But there are some we can see. So this is actually the outside of an ammonite fossil. It's a bit weathered, it's not a very good one, but it does give you an idea of what's here. Okay, so this one's super gorgeous. So when we talk ammonites, we normally see those ridges. And in this one, you can properly see the ridges in the ammonite. So he was a big, big boy. And whether or not, they are peppered all over this surface. But enough on fossils, it's time to face the pool. So now you're going to have to watch me tiptoe in very cautiously, very carefully. Because obviously this has a very uneven bottom. This isn't a normal swimming pool. But that doesn't mean we can't belly flop anyway. In terms of this tidal pool, there's like a nice shallow shelf here. And then it gets quite deep the further you go. But oh, honestly, it's just glorious. So this tidal pool that I'm in isn't natural. This was actually blasted by the headmaster of the local boys' school. The headmaster owned this quarry and just decided that it would be a good idea to make the boys go for a cold swim. Um, must admit, on a day like today, absolutely glorious. In the depths of winter, hideous. It's definitely a fun little local landmark, but and as a geologist, it's really good fun saying that I got to swim in a quarry in the sea all at the same time. Brilliant. Unfortunately, there's a lot of seaweed and I can't really see the rocks that well. So before I face the hike back up the hill, I decided to dry off by looking at some more rocks. You know, there's a theme here, isn't there? The amusing quirk of this spot is there's a sign at the top of the hill that says you'll get no phone signal. That's not true. I do get phone signal. It's just telling me that I'm in France now. Um, I will put the little notification somewhere. But yeah, apparently my phone is just now telling me I'm in France, so that's fun. All this stone you see around here, though, this hill that I'm pretty much stood on is just a spoil heap left over from the quarry of stuff they didn't want. So all of the little bits of rock that you see, they're all very fragmented. You also can hear the stone is very hard and there's been different times where they've used the ringing sound of this rock actually as a tell. Because it's very, very fine-grained, it will have quite a high ringing noise to it, if it's the hard stuff. So, there was somewhere I went in Portland, which I intend to do a video on at some point, that they actually had a whole bunch of this Portland stone stuff laid out with like a giant xylophone. It was quite incredible. And that reminds me, I've got to go back there and do a video. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed your quick intro to Dancing Ledge today. I am now going to try and tackle that hill again, but thank you for sticking around.